What's going on, Colts Nation? I appreciate you joining me for another video where today. We're going to have another mock draft. I believe this is number four, and then we're going to have one more uh, here in a few weeks. Draft is in a couple of weeks. We'll have one before the draft. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead. There's been you know more free agency after the first week of free agency. We did a mock draft. Some more time has gone by. Some more free agents have been signed. Trades have happened, um, and their priorities for the Colts, right? If the Colts want to win the division, there are priorities. And I think with the addition of Stefan Diggs going to the Texans, the priority for the Colts, we all kind of assumed was going to be the secondary, specifically the cornerbacks. Uh, but that is definitely what I think we're going to be targeting. So with the first round pick, I have us moving back. I think Chris Ballard uh, does Chris Ballard things. And I think he moves back. Now, in this example, it's the Chiefs move up to end up taking uh, – I think they ended up taking Brock Bowers um, in this model. Could be Brian Thomas Jr. Either way, I thought about staying at 15 and taking Brian Thomas Jr. But, again, with the addition of Stephon Diggs and knowing that the Colts need more cornerbacks, went ahead, traded back, and was hoping – I was just hoping – that the guy I wanted was going to be available. He did end up being available with the number 32 overall pick in the first round here. The Colts are going to take Nate Wiggins, somebody we've talked about plenty. Somebody, this was actually the first draft video we did about draft prospects. I believe it was Nate Wiggins. And we talked about taking him at 15. And since that point, you know, the, the board has moved a little bit. Nate Wiggins looks like he's probably going to go somewhere in the 20s in this model. We trade back. We still get him with the number 32 overall selection here. Now, in this draft, I traded back a few different times. Okay, we were supposed to have the number 46 overall pick. I traded back just a couple of spots, gained an extra pick in this draft, but was able to get wide receiver Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky, who we talked about recently, being an explosive figure in this Steichen offense, somebody that can come in and kind of fits this Steichen offense perfectly. So the way this has kind of worked out, like, yes, I don't want Chris Bauer to trade back. I would rather have, you know, one of the premier guys, but we're still talking about guys that I think are going to be very talented NFL players, right? Nate Wiggins with 32. Then you have Malachi Corley at 49. Then with the 64th overall pick, which we get from, I believe that came from the, the Chiefs. And that pick's going to end up being Braden Fisk, another guy that we've kind of mentioned. I don't think we ever had a video just about Braden Fisk, but everything that he brings to the table, everything that he is on the field, um, everything that he is physically, like what you're going to get from Braden Fisk, I think he's going to have a really good NFL career. Uh, he's going to be an absolute dog in the NFL. So having our first three picks here, right, three picks between 32 and 64, we end up with a cornerback, a wide receiver, and somebody to add to that defensive line depth, somebody that I think can have a big impact throughout his career, and three guys that I think are going to be good in the NFL no matter where they go. So these are guys that I feel comfortable with in those first three picks. And again, trading down. Trading down is still able to get this level of talent. Um, I think it's going to be worth it, you know, getting a bunch of extra picks here, right? Coming into this draft, the Colts have seven picks. Coming out of this draft, I have the Colts drafting nine people and then having a second and a third from Kansas City next year. So, a lot of new draft capital, a lot of ways to build this team around Anthony Richardson. That's what Chris Ballard likes to do is to draft guys to build around the quarterback, right? And that's – he comes from the Brett Veach system, right? Comes from under Brett Veach. So kind of look at what they do. The Chiefs do the same thing, right? They Sure, they got Patrick Mahomes, but they build it through the draft, even trading Tyreek Hill and trying to find answers at wide receiver. Like they build through the draft. And then they pay their own guys. That's just what the Chiefs do. And that's what Chris Ballard's doing. So expecting him to do the same thing, he's going to want more draft capital. And this is the way that I see it going again. Pick 32, Nate Wiggins. Pick 49, Malachi Corley. 64, taking Braden Fisk. And then you get into the third round where with the 82nd pick in the draft, we once again, I believe I had this in my last mock, maybe my last two mocks, but with the 82nd pick taking Braylon Allen, this just feels like somebody that could easily fall to the Colts in the third round. And you got to imagine with 
the physical attributes that Allen has and everything that Chris Ballard wants. And Chris Ballard, a Wisconsin guy, he already drafted one Wisconsin running back. Why not bring in a freak of nature at running back and Braylon Allen, right? This is a guy that in his rookie year can kind of play that like A.J. Dillon role that A.J. Dillon has had with the Packers, right? Because you have Jonathan Taylor, you have some other running backs here. So Braylon Allen doesn't have to get a whole lot put on his plate, but he can learn from Jonathan Taylor, right? And then, obviously, when Jonathan Taylor's contract is up in a couple years, maybe Braylon Allen is that guy. But somebody that I think could be a valuable piece to the rotation as the year goes on. Like, you think about – I mean, we've talked so much about Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor in the backfield together. Then when Jonathan Taylor comes off the field, you have Braylon Allen, who's a freak of nature. Like, can't, can't put that past it enough. Like, Braylon Allen is a freak at the running back spot. So if we can grab him with the 82nd pick in the draft, I think that's great value um, and something that I hope happens. So the first four picks, if that's how it went, those were our first four picks, I'd be very happy with the Chris Ballard draft at this point. Okay, then as we keep going, right, the rest of this draft is basically just me looking into positions of need and me looking into um, these guys athletically, right? We know Chris Ballard, uh, no matter where he drafts a guy, they're going to be athletic. He drafts very athletic people, people that he can come in, like have the athletic tools, and then we can just coach him. That's kind of his philosophy, at least with these later round guys. And for the most part, uh, tends to work out, right? So with the 117th pick, I have us taking Jermaine Burton who is somebody that can take the top off of defense, somebody that can come in and at least compete for a job, right? We're with already taking Malachi Corley and all the guys that we have on the roster. Where will Jermaine Burton fall? He might be a practice squad guy. He might be like Darius Rush, where he doesn't even make it through training camp, ends up on somebody else's team or not on a team at all, right? Jermaine Burton, um, I think, has uh, physical attributes, uh, that Chris Ballard's really going to like, right, when you talk about size, when you talk about speed. Somebody that I think makes sense if he's there at 117 could make sense for the Colts. At 151, taking a center, Tanner or Tolany. Okay, coming out of Wisconsin. Wisconsin, just like running backs, they kind of pump out running backs. They also pump out really good linemen, some dogs, uh, offensive linemen. So I think this would be a, a pick that makes sense, somebody that has a high uh, RAS Four offensive linemen, so somebody that Chris Ballard would be willing to take a chance on. I just thought this made sense when you're looking for the future. Uh, Danny Pinter, is he that guy? Probably not. Bring in a guy for more competition, somebody that can fill a hole in the middle if we absolutely needed it to, right? Add some depth in that spot. And then with 178, another pick that the Colts gained through trade. Have us taking another cornerback, this one coming out of Boston College. And again, this one just – because of physical attributes. I don't actually know anything about this guy, Elijah Jones. Um, don't know anything about him except for the physical profile. And the physical profile is something that Chris Ballard would like. One of these late round guys, Jalen Jones, worked out last year. See if Elijah Jones can come out and be somebody that can be a good part of the depth uh, going into next season. And a 191 linebacker. Uh, don't even know how to say this dude's name. Not going to try. Uh, pretty sure we had him in a mock before. Uh, linebacker coming out of Washington. I think the Colts are going to draft at least one linebacker in this draft class. Um, and I think it'll probably be later in the draft. 191 seems like a good spot. Somebody very athletic. Uh, somebody that is on a team that has been winning for a couple of years. So he has some experience playing high-level teams, playing uh, in big-time games. So I think... The, that kind of experience matters, and Chris Ballard will take a chance on him at 191. Okay, then with the last pick in this draft, it's another cornerback. Once again, the Colts, just like last season, end up getting three cornerbacks in the draft, another one coming out of the seventh round. This one, the Cameron Richardson, cornerback from Mississippi State. His physical profile, I thought, uh, was impressive. Uh, I believe it was like 6'2", somewhere around 200 pounds. And and I just think everything that he brings to the table is, again, just like Jalen Jones last year, drafted in the seventh round, came out, impressed everybody. I think Cameron Richardson has a chance to be one of those late-round guys that surprises people in the NFL. So with his athletic profile, anything's possible. With the coaching staff that we have, I think drafting these guys for their athletic profile and coaching them up and develop, developing these guys – 
I think we're going to be able to do it, right? I have a lot of faith in Shane Steichen and his coaching staff. So this is the draft class, of course, the big four. The first four, Nate Wiggins, Malachi Corley, Braden Fisk, Braylon Allen. These are guys that I think can be centerpieces for the Colts and, and be kind of this young core that gets raised up with Anthony Richardson and gets developed with Anthony Richardson through the years. And we'll see how that goes. I think trading back a couple of times, definitely possible, but still getting good talent. Um, and of course, I'd like to know what your opinion is. And, and again, we get a second and a third round pick next year from Kansas City. So not only do we gain two draft picks in this draft class, we already have two extra for next season as well. You let me know how you feel about this. Would you want to stay at 15 if we were able to get these guys? Is it okay to trade back? You let me know how you feel about all this down in the comment section. Of course, don't forget to subscribe with notifications on so you get notified anytime any of these videos come out. We're going to continue talking more about the draft and different prospects. Of course, any news and updates that come out, I'll let you know as soon as I possibly can. So again, make sure you have those notifications turned on. And of course, I appreciate you stopping by for another video. As always, take care of yourself. Take care of each other and go Colts.